Hey guys, what's going on? I hope you're all doing well. Today we are doing something slightly different, but it's also kind of the same. I've received so many comments asking me if it is possible to play Minecraft on a phone or tablet, and more specifically, if it is possible to use a hacked client on a mobile phone. So today I will be showing you all how to first run Minecraft Java Edition on your mobile phone, and second, how you can install and use some of your favorite hacked clients on your phone. But before we get into the video, I'd like to shout out the legends that are my YouTube members. If you want to get early access to videos or your name and skin in my next video, please consider joining now for as little as 0.6 US dollars a month. It really helps me make more videos like this. Before we get into installing hacked clients and mods like Optifine, let's talk about how it is even possible to run Minecraft Java Edition on your mobile device. This is all made possible with the ProJav Minecraft Launcher. If you have never heard of the ProJav Launcher, it is an alternative launcher for Minecraft Java Edition that gives you the ability to play Minecraft Java on your Android or iOS phone, tablet or iPad. ProJav also gives you the ability to use jar file installers like Optifine, Forge or Fabric for example. You can also add mod jar files or hacked clients into the mods folder, much like the default Minecraft launcher. Installing the ProJav launcher is quite simple, but I had quite a few issues getting mods to work, so I'm first going to run you through the installation process and then I'll talk more about the issues I faced, the solutions I found and how you can hopefully get hack clients to work for yourself. To start, this video is focused on Android based phones as that is what I have available to me. ProJav does support iOS devices and while the installation may be different, the process is likely very similar. To start, you need to open Google Play and search for the ProJav launcher. You then want to download the app and make sure that it is the one created by ArcDeal. I have linked the Google Play website down below as well as an APK download for anyone that would prefer to use that. For anyone wondering if it is safe to install the app, I can say with certainty that it is safe to use. The Google Play app alone has over 5 million downloads and the app's code is public on GitHub. On top of this, the Google Play store scans and tests all of the apps uploaded to make sure that they are safe for everyone. So if you are concerned about safety, I would recommend using the Google Play app rather than the APK download. Once the app has been installed, launch it and sign in with your Minecraft account. You can also play offline, but this will prevent you from playing on most popular servers. Now that you have installed the ProJav launcher, you need to create a few profiles for the versions that you would like to play on. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to attempt to launch a 1.12.2 instance for the Lambda client and a 1.19 instance for the Meteor client. Before you install any mods, it is important to launch these versions in vanilla to download all of the needed assets. I am going to launch both a 1.12.2 instance and then after that loads, I am going to close the game and launch a new instance of vanilla Minecraft 1.19. You only need to launch the versions that you plan to play on. Okay, so now that we have installed the ProJav launcher, it is time to start installing some mods or in our case some hacked clients. Before we get into installing mods, I just want to make it clear that installing random mods or random clients is probably a bad idea. Most of them are made for the PC version of Minecraft, but I would imagine that creating a rat or some other malicious code for mobile is possible. So please only run well known and trusted clients or mods on your device. To start, let's install the Lambda client for Minecraft 1.12.2. To do this, we need to first install Forge. Open a browser on your mobile device and search for Forge 1.12.2 and then download the jar file installer. Once the file has downloaded, open the ProJav launcher and click on install.jar. By default, this will open the recent files on your phone. Here you should see the Forge 1.12.2 installer.jar file. If it does not show up, click on the menu icon found in the top right corner of your screen, then select downloads or you can search through your storage for where the file was saved to. Once you found the Forge jar file, click on it to open the launcher. This will take a few seconds to load. If the log output is enabled, click on the red X found at the top right of your screen. This should reveal the same Forge installer that you use on your normal PC. Just click OK and the installer will automatically install Forge and add it as a new instance. Now back on the home page, click on instances and click create new. 
Under versions, open the installed category and choose the new Forge 1.12.2 version. You can name this instance to whatever you would like and save it. Lastly, it is very important to set the render to the OpenGL ES3 render option, otherwise your game will crash on launch. Once this has all been set up, you can save the profile, but don't launch it just yet. Before we install any mods or the Lambda client in our case, we need to add some custom controls. This will be used to open the client's GUI, open the module settings and to escape from the GUI. Please note that setting up custom controls is only required for mobile phones. If you are using a tablet and have a mouse and keyboard plugged in, you will not need to create custom controls. Back on the home page, click on custom controls. Now tap and hold one of the buttons. It doesn't matter which one you do this to. Click on clone. Now click on the new cloned button, name the button GUI and under mapping, set the first option to the default GUI key. In my case, I am installing the Lambda client and Lambda's default GUI key is Y. So I am going to set the value to Y. Then set all of the other mapping options to unknown. You can customize the look of the button, but I'm not going to do that in this video. You can now drag the button to anywhere that you think is convenient on screen. Now, this isn't necessary, but I find it helpful, so I'm going to repeat this process, but I'm going to call the new button ESC, short for escape, and I'm going to set its value to the escape key. This can then be used to easily exit the client's GUI. I'm also going to repeat this one last time. This time I am naming the button R click. This will allow you to open module settings. Set the first mapping option to special underscore sec and the rest to unknown. Now use the back out button to get back to the main menu and save the button layout. You can choose a custom save name or leave it as default. So now that everything has been set up, it is finally time to install some mods or in our case, the Lambda client jar file. This is where I ran into a few issues. The default file explorer on my phone does not provide sufficient permissions to show the folder where Minecraft is installed. You can get other file manager apps like File Commander for example, but these apps generally make you sign up for a free trial or pay for the features that give you access to the .minecraft folder. So I found the easiest way to install mods is to plug the phone into a computer and explore the phone's file system this way. If this is not an option for you, I will link other tutorials on how you can install mods in the description. If you have not plugged your phone into a computer before, you will need to open your phone and grant the computer access to the phone's files. Open the file explorer and under devices click on phone. Open internal storage and look for the android folder. Then open the data folder. Once this opens, look for the pojav launcher. It may be easier to search for it. Open this folder and then open files, then open the .minecraft folder. Here you should see a mods folder. If there is no mods folder, you will need to create a folder and call it mods, all lowercase. Now you can drag whatever mods you want to use into this folder. I am going to put both the lambda client jar file and an optifine mod jar file in this folder. You can now disconnect your phone from your computer. Before we actually launch the game and learn how to set up custom keys to toggle modules, I'd like to take a quick break and remind you all to like or dislike the video so that I know if you're enjoying my content. Please also take a second to consider subscribing, it really helps my channel. Thanks for all of the support. Everything has now been set up and installed. To launch your game, open profiles and click on the Forge 1.12.2 profile, then click on play. Your game should launch and once it does, create a new world to see if your hack client is working. Once you load into the new world, click on the GUI buttons that you created. This should open the client's GUI. You can now click the mouse button to move around the client's modules. You can click the R click button you created earlier to open a module settings. Now, if you want to create custom keybinds and buttons for those keybinds, you will need to escape back to the home page. Here, you need to again click on custom controls. Now, you need to clone a button and map it to an unused key. I am going to create a button for kill aura. I'm going to name the button aura and map it to R. Save your new custom controls and launch your game. Open the client's GUI and open the Aura settings. Then click on the keybind and click the Aura button you made. Now pressing this button will toggle the Kill Aura module. You will have to repeat this for all of the modules that you would like to use. But when you are done, you will have buttons to toggle all of the client's modules. Installing a Minecraft 1.19.2 client is basically the same as installing a 1.12.2 client, but you will have to install Fabric. 
To do this, open a web browser on your mobile device and search for Minecraft Fabric. You then need to download the Fabric Universal Draw File Installer. Once the installer has been downloaded, open the Pojav Launcher and click on install.jar. Find and click on the fabric installer.jar file that you just downloaded. Now close the output log and here you should see the same fabric installer used on your computer. Select the version that you would like to install and then click install. You can then repeat the process of connecting your phone to your computer and opening the .micraft slash mods folder. Here you can place the Meteor Client's jar file that matches the version of Fabric that you just installed. You can now disconnect your phone from your computer. You will then again need to create custom controls for the client or edit the controls you made earlier so that the GUI button is mapped to the default key for the new client that you are using. In this case I'm using Meteor so I'm going to change the GUI keys mapping to right shift. I'm then going to save the new custom controls and go back to the main menu. You can then once again create a new instance and under version click on installed and then click on the fabric release that you just installed. It is again very important to set the render option to OpenGL ES3, otherwise your game will crash on launch. Once this has all been set up, you can save the profile and launch your game. If you would like to set custom keys to toggle modules, repeat the steps used to create custom buttons for a 1.12.2 client. And just like that, you now have Minecraft Java Edition running on your Android device. And on top of that, you have also installed your favorite hack clients. I hope this video was interesting and helpful. All of the downloads are linked down below with the written tutorial and some extra resources. There are also links to an FAQ and some solutions to common problems. If you're still having issues, please leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to help. Anyways, it has been your boy Kylab, peace in the Middle East.